research driven. And so I had to produce something and I produced some mappings. So, and the barred owls have come over to the west coast and that is new. So on the first slide, this was the map that gave me the idea for my capstone. So this map is a relatively simple map and um, KB Livesey used it in his publication in 2009 called Range Expansion of the Barred Owls, the Chronology and Distribution. And it's a fairly simple map, but it is um, referenced and used all the time. So I thought, can I do something like this, but on a scale of just California? And so that's what I did. And since this map is, it's relatively simple, I have a couple of uh, other maps that I've stolen, I did not make, um, to show you how, when the barred owls came over and how they came over. So on this map, you can see the area that is labeled one, basically everything east of the Mississippi River is where the barred owls historically have been. And that's where they belong. And then they slowly but surely started moving westward. And there's different hypotheses to say why they moved westward. Um, the most generally accepted one is that as people, as Europeans settled the East Coast and then started moving West, they built riparian corridors and um, removed fire from the Great Plains area. And this allowed trees to grow and gave the barred owls places to hopscotch over. So they came East of the Mississippi, up into Canada, and then finally down. Oops, I went the wrong way. Oh, and here's just another map that's more colorful. Um, again, on the right, you have gray is the historic barred owl range. On the left, you have um, blue is where the northern spotted owl is. I, I don't know how big your screens are, but it, can you see the purple in California? And that's the Ca California spotted owl range. And then the dots are the barred owls um, in history and how they came over. So red is the, the earliest known, it's to 1910, 1914. And I believe that um, bird is in a museum and so it's definitely a barred owl because one of the things that people ask is how do we know back in 1910, was it a barred owl or was it a spotted owl or you know, how good is how good is the data that says the barred owls were moving at this time? And the data is fairly good. And this is another map, and I didn't make these maps. Um, and it just shows the barred owls coming over. So the red is 1910, um, yellow and orange is the 1920s and 1930s. As you get to the green color, that's the 40s and 50s. And in 65, you get to the blue circles. And I'm just going to go through these fast because I have bigger maps that show this. And then you can see starting in the 80s, the barred owls came down into California. So why, why do we care that the barred owls have had this range expansion? You know, most people think it's, it's good. You know, the animal is doing well. The owl is expanding its range. It's increasing its population. Is, is that not a good thing? And um, for the spotted owl, it is not a good thing. So um, the spotted owl, there are, it's one species and there's three subspecies. You have the Northern spotted owl, which is in Washington, Oregon and Northern California and down the California, the Northern California coast. You have, and the Northern spotted owl is federally listed as threatened and state listed as threatened. So they have um, protections under the Endangered Species Act. You have the California spotted owl there on the eastern mountain ranges. And there's a dividing line where the northern spotted owl and California spotted owls connect. And it's on Highway 299 up um, in the Lassen National Forest. And the California spotted owl is a candidate species. 
And it was supposed to have a decision, I think, last September, but that decision has not been made. And at this point, there's no state listing. And then the third um, spotted owl subspecies is the Mexican spotted owl, and it is also federally listed as an endangered species. And Mexican spotted owls are not in California, they're in New Mexico. So why do the barred owls negatively impact the spotted owls? Um, spotted owls are um, habitat and prey specialists. They have very specific requirements on where they will um, nest and breed. They have very um, specific prey. They don't eat a lot of different foods. They have low fecundity, which is the rate of reproduction, specifically the rate of female young that live, and it's very low. They have low resiliency. They do not adjust to change very well at all, and they're docile. They're very docile. Um, so here's a picture of a spotted owl that I, um, I actually he was a new a new spotted owl on the landscape and what they need is um, old growth forest so the um, northern spotted owl need old growth forest with a 70 percent canopy cover and then here's another picture that's the female so they're very docile and the docile, the barred owls actually chase them off of their old growth forest habitat. So they need old growth forest to, to nest and to breed successfully. They also, the years and years of logging have, um, have fragmented the landscape. So one of the, one of the problems is the areas where they should disperse, there's too many open areas and they get um, preyed upon by great horned owls and other species. The northern spotted owl or spotted owls in general are very docile. So when a barred owl comes into the territory, they actually um, attack them and chase them off, which also makes the um, spotted owls, when they're looking for a mate and when they're interacting with their mate, they call. And when the barred owls come in, the spotted owls go quiet so they don't get um, attacked by the barred owls. And so this reduces the chance of a single spotted owl finding a mate. So how did we get all this information on spotted owls? So timber is a, um, has been a big and important part of the Pacific Northwest. And back in the 70s when the decline of the spotted owl was, was noticed and was a grave concern, we started surveying for spotted owls. And so prior to any timber harvest, you do surveys for spotted owls. Um, and spotted owls will defend their nest, nesting area from around March 15th to July 31st. They defend it while they're nesting and while they have young close by. So you go and you call at night, you usually have call points and you go about every half mile and you play their, their hoot and they'll respond back to you. And if they are on a nest or have young, they will, they will definitely respond back to you. And you do this in hopes of finding them. And if you find an owl, if he responds to you at night, you generally go back very early the next morning or the next night, right before dark, and you offer him a mouse and they'll come and take the mouse. And so the male should grab the mouse and take it to the female. So you can see this is the male and he has a mouse that I gave him. And the female came to him this time and he gave her the, the mouse. So I have the calls. You go out into the woods and you 
there's different calls, but this is the four note spotted owl hoot. Oh. I got it to be quiet. Woo, that was hard. Um, so that was the four note hoot, and then you could hear the kweep also. And so you call the four note hoot, and then the kweep is the answering, answering call. And I'm not gonna play it again because I had a hard time in presenter mode making it be quiet. But they will, they will respond to that call when you go out in the woods. But I don't suggest doing it because actually calling for them could be considered a form of harassment and uh, in violation of the Endangered Species Act. So. Oh no. All right. That is not what I wanted to happen. Okay, I'm having technical difficulties. Give me just a second. And I'm on 13. The music does not work in presenter mode. And sorry about this. I did I did not try. Clearly, I did not try doing the hoots while in presenter mode. Apologize. Oh no, stop. Okay. Whew. Okay. So here they are after those lovely noises. Now, one thing I will tell you about this pair um, this is a pair that is east of Mac the town of McLeod in Siskiyou County. And this has a really interesting story, so I thought I'd tell you some real stories from the field. There's an area in McLeod, and there was a historic long-term pair that was very reproductive. And the Forest Service used to take the third grade class from Mount Shasta out there and show them they would come. You would go out there, you could get to the nest site, really, they could take a, a bus, you could get there. It was relatively easy and they would come in and they would mouse and there was this long-term pair. And shortly after one of the field trips, the, the pair disappeared. And then a barred pair, a barred owl pair moved in. And for years and years, the um, uh, NSO pair was not heard from. And then through a scientific study, the barred, the barred owl pair was removed. And it was the next season, um, the male showed up really late in the season, late August, we got a response. There was going to be a timber harvest for the Forest Service and we got a response from the mail and we were really excited. Um, that was a great idea. And then it was early the next spring, the female showed up and they attempted to nest. We found a nest tree. They acted like they were nesting, but no young, no live young were ever seen. But one theory, because that was a year that all the spotted owls in that geographic area um, nested and theirs was the only one that failed. So if you look, the male is on the outside and the female is next to the tree. The male has that kind of funny white spot on his chest. The male should be significantly smaller than the female. And this is a really, really large spotted owl male because he should be smaller. Um, so there is some questioning going around. Is, is he like an F3 hybrid between a spotted owl and a barred owl? And, and we don't know, but that's, that's an interesting theory. And then I was gonna take time now um, to discuss, you know, why is, why are the spotted owls 
in such why did their populations decline? And it is generally accepted that the spotted owls saw population declines due to habitat loss due to timber harvest. And then the Northwest Forest Plan was a landscape scale land use policy that was started. And this halted the loss of, of old growth forests. So now 90% of suitable NSO habitat or Northern Spotted Owl habitat occurs on federal lands. So the past threat was logging of old growth forests. There was a loss of 60 to 80% of old growth from the 1800s to the 1990s. And that was halted with the Northwest Forest Plan. And I got most of this information from the um, Spotted Owl Recovery Plan, Northern Spotted Owl Recovery Plan. And so um, I believe I have documentation to back that up. The, so the pre so we've we've mitigated habitat loss. So the present threat, the biggest present threat is the barred owl, the barred owls competing, out competing the northern spotted owls, and actually, um, they actually attack them. And there's still habitat loss, but most of that is from fire. Uh, you know, I think this last couple of days is a prime example of that. And if you, since my capstone was mapping, I actually threw in the fire layer. And if you overlap historical fires from 1978 to 2018 over the spotted owl range, 66% of spotted owl range has burned since 1978. Now that fire data is just the fire, all fires. So some of those fires were maybe not as intense and could have helped actually help the forest, but some of them were stand re replacing fires. So that 66% you have to take with a little bit grain of salt because we don't know, I did not do any um, analysis of the intensity of each fire. But the threat of fire is significant, especially with the bark beetle infestation. Um, especially the southern forests have a huge amount of um, pine tree death because of the bark beetle. So now let's talk about the barred owl since he was in the title of my um, presentation. The barred owl is a beautiful owl and he's, they're native to the east coast and they've had this recent, recent range expansion to the west. And when they came west, their no, numbers were very low at first. And they've had this population explosion in the last 10 years. Now, how do they relate to the spotted owl? Remember I discussed how those northern spot, spotted owls and especially northern spotted owls are habitat and prey um, specialists. They have to have old growth and the wood rat and the flying squirrel are very important to the spotted owl. Barred owls are generalists. They'll live just about anywhere. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Siskiyou County, but we have a place called Lake Shastina and it's very open. They've had them nesting and successfully nesting in Lake Shastina. They prey, they prey on just about anything. They'll eat, barred owls will eat anything, including amphibians. There's been some recent studies and they're worried about our um, endangered amphibians because the barred owls will eat those. And the barred owls are, are aggressive. Where the a spotted owl is docile, the, the barred owls are aggressive. And they aggressively take over the spotted owl territories and push them out of the prime habitat into lesser quality habitat. Another problem is, is even though they're separate species, they're very closely related and they can interbreed. So a barred owl can breed with a spotted owl and you get a hybrid. There needs to be more um, research done. It appears as if the hybrids have less fertility, which could be one of the problems with um, that pair out in East McLeod. So the hybrids tend to have less fertility. There needs to be a lot more um, research. It appears as if the one thing I read, and it, I have only read it in one peer reviewed paper, 
is that a, so a spotted owl can breed with a barred owl and they can have a successful young. And then a hybrid, when, it, when a hybrid breeds with a hybrid, generally they're, they're infertile. And when a hybrid breeds with a spotted owl, generally they're infertile, but a hybrid can breed successfully with a barred owl. At least that was, that was the research I've seen so far, but there needs to be more information about that. And another um, interesting point about the barred owls being aggressive, with the, there's a lot of research going on right now and with the, with the research I have seen is it seems that when a barred owl moves into an area where it has not occupied before, the diversity of all owls reduces. So the northern pygmy owl, the, what, the screech owl, all the owl diversity lowers and they, the hypothesis is that the barred owls are preying upon the smaller owls. And there was also the, um, the Hoopa Valley tribe does a lot of um, research and Mark Higley, you might, if you're real interested, I would um, search Mark Higley out of the Hoopa tribal forestry. And he put out some acoustic recording devices and they at a um, Northern spotted owl nest where there was young and they, they could hear the parents interacting with the young and the female begging for, my, for food. And um, all of a sudden they detected a barred owl um, note. And the NSO became agitated and agitated and agitated. And there was a, a lot of commotion and, and um, Mark Higley's been doing this research for years. And he said the only other time he's heard an uh, NSO become this agitated was when they would go in and, and band the, the NSO young. Well, when they went to check the nest, there were no live young. So the hypothesis there is, that, is did the barred owl um, prey upon the NSO young? I believe Mark thinks they did. There's no proof other than this um, recording and I have the um, I have the link to that abstract if anybody wants it. Stephanie. Yes. Um, Dan is asking what the F two and F three hybrids are. Oh, the um, so you have a barred owl and a spotted owl mate, and they have they're a hybrid. So, an F two hybrid would be the hybrids young. So an F two if it if it bred with a barred owl, it would be, their young would be an F3. And it gets murky because we don't know is, can, you know, can a hybrid successfully breed with a hybrid? You know, we don't think so, but there's not enough information to say no. And can, an, every time the Fs go down a number is further down off the, the initial pairing line. So, you have the spotted owl with a barred owl and you create a hybrid. So an F2 hybrid would be the young from the original hybrid and an F3 would be the next young. Does that make sense? Yeah, got it, thank you. And it gets murky because we don't know how fertile um, the hybrids are. The, I've only read one peer reviewed paper and it seemed to believe that only um, a hybrid could only breed with a barred but that could be wrong. So here's some more pictures from the back. And I actually um, do a little bit of animal um, rehab with the, um, I'm up here in Siskiyou County, but I work with Susan who is um, the Shasta Wildlife Rescue Rehab and Rehabilitation. And I got a call about an owl one time and from the back, barred owls look exactly like a spotted owl or uh, they're really close. But from the front, um, you can see he has bars, not spots. And then if you guys wanna be patient with me, I can play the barred owl hoot, but I'll have to do the funny stuff again to make it stop playing. So here, let's try this. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
Oh, I think I got it to be quiet. Yay. Okay, so that's their four note who it's who cooks for you, who cooks for you all. Um, so it's different than the spotted owl hoot. They're much more noisy. And then their contact call is like the Kuwait, but with a world. Oh no, it's not gonna it's gonna be it's gonna be uh oh, oh, oh. Oh, let's see, can I just... All right, let me see. Ah, we should not have done, we should not have done the noise. We should not have done. Okay, I got it to be quiet, finally. Um, so you can hear that their, their hoots are different, but the way we got our data for the barred owls is when you're out there and you're surveying, we call it hooting for spotted owls in, in an effort to protect them when there's a logging um, operation, the barred owls will answer. And so the barred owls will come an answer to the spotted owl call. So that's also a problem for the spotted owls because, you know, they're hooting trying to find a mate and the barred owl comes and is aggressive towards them. So um, that's a problem. Barred owls are also slightly bigger than spotted owls. And that's another reason why we think the male in the picture, the, fem the spotted owls that are on the it's my left side of the screen. The two owls, the two owls are spotted owls, northern spotted owls, the females against the tree and the males on the outside. Um, he's big and so that's why there's the hypothesis is, is he a hybrid because he's really big. Um, so barred owls are bigger but they look different from the, from the front. They're, and then some experts say that the hybrids cannot sound like a spotted owl or a barred owl. Um, if this male is a spot is a hybrid, he can sound like he is he sounds exactly like a spotted owl. And then I'm not going to go too much into this, but um, a lot of my information came from the revised recovery plan for the northern spotted owl. Um, it discussed, you know, what it would take to delist them. We're not near delisting yet. Um, but if you see the recovery strategy, um, number three is barred owl management. So that would be important. Another very interesting, so now talking about barred owls and, and this came up, there is a barred owl removal um, project going on. The original one was done off of green, green, green diamond timber down by the Hoopa Valley um, tribal area. And so this is a big boring slide with a lot of words. Basically they've reviewed um, the effects of barred owls on spotted owls. And um, there's, a, there's nine hypotheses of what's going to happen if we do nothing. If we do nothing and we don't manage the barred owl population, what will happen? And there's a lot of different um, hypotheses. The first one is that the barred owls will replace the northern spotted owls throughout their range. Um, and then the rest of the hypothesis, you know, could they, you know, could the northern spotted owls just keep a little place? There's a lot of, um, a lot of different hypotheses and very well studied. And these are the other nine hypotheses. Um, I can provide the, I can provide this, uh, it's the Journal of Wildlife Management. Um, I can provide that slide to Larry and that way if anybody wants to look up the paper. It's interesting if you want to um, go that route. Okay, so now I'm getting into the, what I actually did for my, um, for my capstone. Uh, Stephanie? Yes? 
Uh, has the uh, McLeod pair ever raised young? No. And it's kind of disappointing. There was a, um, there was a, a large um, forest service timber um, harvest and they've disappeared off the landscape. So that was, that was disappointing. Um, maybe they'll come back, you know, maybe they're gone just this year because they did the logging late last season. Um, maybe they're just hiding out. I, I, you know, I'm not sure they weren't a very successful pair and I think they were, I know there were four, I think it's been four years since they were discovered, four or five years since the first discovery of them. So that's disappointing. But they weren't, they were odd. There's a really huge, like 90, 90, it's diameter at breast height, 90 inches diameter. That's a huge tree. That was the historic nest tree for the old NSO pair and for the Bardow pair. And this pair never nested there. They actually went across Ash Creek and over into marginal habitat um, to nest. And their, their nest tree was horrible. It, it didn't have much cover. Um, we had always hoped they would move back into the other area, but they didn't. So we'll see if they come back. That area is, um, is surveyed by the Forest Service and by two private timber companies because um, Sierra Pacific Industries has land that that nest core affects and so does um, Olympic um, has land there. So what I did for my mapping is when you survey for timber, you get incidental barred out um, observations. So I thought, hey, you know, can I look at just California? Because we had most of the maps were of the entire Pacific Northwest and most of them were Northern Spotted Owl um, territory. So I said, what can I do? Let's look at just barred owls just in California. And so I, I got all the barred owl observations off of the California Department of Fish and Wildlife has a, um, a website called the California Natural Diversity Database. And you have to have a password um, if you work for an organization or you give them a reason why, you can get a password. And I was able to download this large database with over 7,000 barred owl observations. Now, that's not individual barred owls, that's 7,000 observations. So you might, uh, you might detect the same barred owl year after year after year. So it's not 7,000 barred owls, it's 7,000 observations. And you you sometimes you detect the same barred owl week after week. So and because the protocol, when you go out and you survey for protocol for timber, um, for two years prior to your timber harvest, you go out once a week for six weeks to survey to see if you get any owls. And then after you've done the two years of six visits, then you can go down to um, three visits and each visit has to be eight days apart. It has to be seven plus one. Um, and so the area is surveyed quite thoroughly. So I looked at the data and I chose not to divide my data into even years. I looked at the data and I felt there were four natural breaks. So the original, the first section is 1978 to 1990. And these are very, very low numbers of um, barred owl observations. It's between one and 19, very low numbers. And so the next time period is 1991 to 1999. And the numbers range from 41 to 111. So I felt like this was the time period where it was it was close-ish to 100. And then the third time period is 2000 to 2009. And these numbers were, let's say roughly 100 and over. We have some 63 or 82s, but they were, they were trending above 100. And then from 2010 to 2018, we're over 200 and just exponentially going up. 
there were some reasons why we had increases other than the barred owls were increasing. Um, so 78 to 90, I think the only surveys were, and I could be wrong, I'm not positive, but most of the surveys were US Forest Service and people were realizing, oh, the, the spotted owls are having a problem, we better study them. And then the 1991 to 1999, there could be more observations because private timber had to start surveying for spotted owl. And so you had a lot more people surveying. And 2000 and up, it's, it's definitely an increase. So this is a map I made. So the map on the right is the map I made. Um, the orange area, is northern spotted owl habitat and northern spotted owl range and the blue is california spotted owl range and the little plus marks are barred owl observations and the original barred owl observation was in mendocino county the experts um dark gutierrez and gould gould are their three spotted owl experts they they've produced a lot of peer-reviewed um information. Um, Gutierrez is Rocky Gutierrez. Um, he's very well known in the spotted owl um, realm. So they have a publication called The Barred Owl Invasion of California, and it's from the AUC in 1998. And the three of them argue that barred owls were probably not present in large numbers in California prior to the initiation of spotted owl surveys. And they list for their reasoning the effort in locating spotted owls during this time and naturalists efforts in birding to support their their um, estimation because like if we had never heard a barred owl in california and somebody in this group went out and heard a barred owl you would tell people and so they're really confident that Prior to the spotted owl surveys, there were not barred owls in large numbers in California. Um, and like I said, the US Forest Service established statewide surveys for northern spotted owls from 1986 to 1990. And demographic studies were established in northwestern California and then the Sierra Nevada mountains for um, California spotted owl. And then as I go forward, these are all the barred owl observations from 1978 to 1990. They're mostly along the Northern California coast, but we, you can see one um, observation over there in Shasta County. I think that's up by Lassen Park. Um, a barred owl is over there and that's the California spotted owl area. Okay, so 1991 to 1999, um, there's considerable spread from the last slide um, and considerable um, more observations. So this was the time period when the private timberland man managers began surveying for spotted owl. So this increased the geographic area covered and the lands covered because a lot of private timberlands is um, gated off from the public and so um, it really increased the geographic area and led to an increased detection of barred owls. But again, the experts agree that the population increase was also there. You can also see that there's an observation in eastern Modoc County in an area where a spotted owl would not live. So the, the barred owls are not very discerning. And so from 2000 to 2009, um, it just, it, it grew again. And so they're growing in population and they're having a significant impact. They're also, if you notice in the California spotted owl range, they are, um, they're heading south. So the, they're really impacting the California spotted owls. And then I have a picture of this um, barred owl. That's a female barred owl. Um, I was called when I was working at the Forest Service. Uh, she was um, sick and in somebody's yard and was uh, 
being attacked by cats. And um, so I got her and I, I, could, I, could not re I couldn't get her to recover. She um, died relatively um, quickly in my care. Uh, we hypothesized because of her symptoms um, that an anti-rodenticide, an anticoagulant rodenticide could possibly have killed her from her symptoms. Um, and so just don't ever use um, rat killer because the owls eat the rats and they die. And even though she's a barred owl, it was sad. And so then um, 2010 to 2018, the last mapping, um, they have just, they have exploded. So uh, there's basically not an area in the spotted owl range where they're not impacted by barred owls. Again, the barred owls are out there in Modoc where spotted owls won't live. And they have marched southern in the California spotted owl range. In fact, you can see one, um, I'm not good with my, um, southern counties, but I believe there's one way down there right next to the LA basin. And so that um, the barred owls are on the move. And so here's a just a progression. You can see it's nice to see a visual. You can see the barred owls just increased and increased. So what else threatens them? Let's go back to the spotted owls. What else threatens the spotted owls? Well, again, fire. Um, even the fires we're having now up, you know, up in Happy Camp, there's a bad fire actually got into the, the town of Happy Camp. That's some prime spotted owl habitat up there. Um, fire is a significant threat to the spotted owls. And so I was able to go, I believe it's a Cal Fire website, and I was able to download all the, um, the historical fire data from 1978. And I can throw the fire data on top of my northern spotted owl and California spotted owl ranges. And you can see that it's a pretty dismal picture. And then let's put the barred owls on top of the fire. And yeah, the, it's a pretty dismal picture, especially for the northern spotted owls. Um, I, you know, between fire and the barred owls, I don't know how we're going to um, recover the spotted owls, the northern spotted owls. And the California spotted owl is not listed yet, it's a candidate, and so um, it's, not, it's not a very good story for them either. And then let's go down, I circled the um, southern California coastal range where there are no barred owl observations to date. Um, so the Southern California coastal range, those California spotted owls, there's a lot of research there. There's not ge genetic, um, there's no genetic flow between the Southern coastal California spotted owls and the um, Sierra Nevada and the more Eastern California spotted owls. The LA basin there um, seems to be a huge geographic um, barrier which causes some genetic problems in the Southern California coastal range. But when you throw the fire layer over there, the last refuge for the California spotted owl to not be impacted by the barred owl is almost 100% impacted by fire. Again, not all of these fires are the high intensity stand replacing fires. You know, uh, the spotted owls have evolved with fire on the landscape. And so if it's a, a low intensity fire that does not take out their nest tree, they can probably survive. Or if you have small pockets of these high intensity areas, you know, they'll survive. Um, but combining the two, and now with the bark beetle kill and the drier climate, our fires are higher intensity. It's a fairly um, dismal picture. So in conclusion is the barred owl invasion of California is a threat to spotted owls. Um, there's a lot of studies right now. So there was an original study by um, 
oh, his name just left me, but it's out of Green Diamond um, Timber Products. There was a, um, a wildlife biologist that did the initial barred owl removal um, study. And so he, the, the barred owls, even though they're not native to California, they are protected by the um, Migratory Bird Treaty Act. And so you can't, nobody, person or government agency can decide that the barred owls are bad and we're going to lethally remove them. But you can apply for a scientific study permit on, that's allowed under the Migratory Bird Treaty Act. And that what was, that's what was done. And Green Diamond did a study and removed barred owls. And they lethally removed them. And they had a lot of success. So there was one area that the barred owl pair was removed and a female spotted owl that they had not heard from in seven years immediately came back. And so they believe the spotted owls are still out there. They've just gone quiet and they're hiding. But now that we've gone this long, we're hitting the end of the lifespan. You know, spotted owls live around 20-ish years. We're hitting the end of the lifespan. And so uh, there is some urgency if we're going to try to remove barred owls. And so that study ended um, when I said that the, um, the, uh, the on east, east of McLeod, the, um, there, there was a, a pair removed, a pair of barred owls removed, and it was the end of the next season. The male showed up, and then the female showed up the beginning of the next season. That was a study from Zach Hanna out of Berkeley, and he again had the scientific permit that was legal through the Migratory Bird Treaty Act. And then the federal government is now doing a large scale barred owl removal through Washington, Oregon. And I believe there's a couple places in California and there, there's, they should be producing the peer reviewed documents to um, see how successful that was. The initial, um, the initial results look encouraging. Now, it is probably impossible to remove all barred owls from the West Coast. And that's probably not going to be a management plan. What they're, they're thinking, maybe they could make areas of refugia for the spotted owls, but the Migratory Bird Treaty Act being a treaty that protects birds, once we'll have to see that's going to be a hurdle for if U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service decides they would like to manage the barred owl population to help the spotted owls, you can only do it under a scientific permit at this part. So, and so here we have the picture on my left, the owl with the red eyes, I should have fixed that, um, is a northern spotted owl and the owl in the middle is a barred owl and that is me offering a mouse to um, the same owl that's over here with the red eyes. And this is a northern spotted owl baby. That's, it's not the pair that I talked about, East McLeod, but this is further east. Um, so east of McLeod, west of Bernie, somewhere out in there. And, so, and they're cute. <laughs> and so going forward, um, they need to do genetics and figure out how bad is the, um, how much inner interbreeding is there. Um, there is a, a pair, there's a barred and um, spotted owl pair east of McLeod um, that does breed. Again, um, Zachary Hanna did genetics on the barred owl to see, you know, how, how much you know, where he wanted to see how removed the West Coast barred owls were from the East Coast. He, he produced several peer reviewed papers. They're very interesting. But more, more studies need to be done on, you know, how much hybridization is taking place. And I talked about the Migratory Bird Treaty Act. Um, 
right now you can only remove barred owls using scientific studies. If there was ever going to be a large scale persistent barred owl removal, um, you would have to change the Migratory Bird Treaty Act and that's a federal treaty with foreign nations. So um, there, and do we wanna do that? Um, we need continued habitat protection with the fires and with everything, there's a lot more political pressure to log federal lands. And, and I've worked for a private timber company before. Um, so it's, there, it's not, there's not a one size fits all. I will say that almost all old growth forest is on government lands. So old growth forest is managed by government agencies. So should we manage government lands differently than private timber lands? I'm not sure. And that is all I have for you. So I think I was yeah, Stephanie, um, we have another one question from Roberta Lyons is asking if uh, is logging allowed after nesting season and even if spotted owls are identified identified in the area? Yes. Well, so um, there, yes. Um, you, there's, you have to get your timber harvest plan approved through U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. You also have to um, get your timber harvest, if you're a private timber company, Cal Fire is the regulatory agency, so you have to get Cal Fire and U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to sign off on your plan. There is a formula. You, you have to make sure that, and I don't remember the numbers, but if they map the, you go through and you, you habitat type your land. So if you say, let me back up. So when you have, a, you know where the pear is nesting, you know where the nest tree is and you make an activity center and they do, they take a 1.3 1, 1 mile buffer from that activity center. And within that 1.3 mile buffer, you have to leave so much nesting roosting habitat and so much um, foraging habitat. And so you can, you can log, but you have to leave, um, and it's in the Forest Practice Act, you have to leave um, X amount of, of timber. And I, I, I stayed on the wildlife side, so I don't remember um, the rules um, specifically, but they, it is highly um, regulated. You know, I was personally disappointed um, because the, the, one, the new pair in Eastern McLeod that I told you the story about, we were really excited you know, um, I, I was there the night the male was first heard from. So in case people came late, the, quickly the story was there's this place in east, eastern, east of McLeod and there was this long-term Northern Spotted Owl pair. The Forest Service would do field trips to it for the third grade class. And then one year within days of the third grade class coming out, the, the pair disappeared. And a barred pair moved in years go by and no northern spotted owls were heard from. Um, that barred pair was removed by Zach Hanna for that genetic study on the barred owls. And then the end of that season, the male was, we heard the male, my friend got the male. And um, the beginning of the next season, the female was there and they attempted nesting. Um, and that was three or four years ago, maybe maybe five, I don't remember. Um, we, the reason I was hooting was because the Forest Service had a um, timber harvest plan and they put forth the timber harvest plan. Their plan was approved by US Fish and Wildlife Service. The Forest Service does not have to get Cal Fire approval. The Forest Service is a, go is a federal government, it's federal land. The state does not tell the feds what to do. Um, so Cal Fire was not involved in that decision. The harvest took um, place last year. So 
last year about now <clears throat> and then through so the surveys done this starting this march um that brand new pair which was i felt a step forward in recovery has not been heard from and um and then i called my private timber contacts and was like hey you know the elk pair is really um special to me did you get them you know my friends in the forest service they're not hearing them can you tell me are they there and no private timber did not pick those owls up so that was disappointing and maybe they'll come back um maybe not. you said that, you said they live uh, maybe 20 years yeah yeah and um, that's a young that's a young pair that male we don't know the female was an adult when she showed up but the male um is a was a young was a young a sub adult male he he you can tell from their tail feathers and he was a sub adult male when he showed up so he's got a light, long lifespan even though we're we're questioning his heritage <laughs> yeah so I'm, I'm wondering um what delayed the listing of the california northern uh, california spotted owl they weren't having as much trouble i don't believe I, they were, I don't think their numbers did not plummet the way the Northern Spotted Owl is, is my understanding. I have not, I've done most of my studying on Northern Spotted Owls, but I believe the California population, I, they had a population decline, but not near as bad as the um, Northern Spotted Owls, but their, their populations, I, and I haven't studied it too much, but I do believe their populations are declining. And there is some significant concern for them. And the listing will, I, rumor has it, we, we believe that the California Spotted Owl will be listed. Um, we could be wrong because things change, but um, especially with the huge fires down south, um, they will probably be listed. Okay. Um, if anybody else has any questions, um, feel free to unmute yourself. Um, Roberta Lyons uh, said she's got to go. It was great. And thank you very much. Interesting. Um, we really appreciate uh, all your hard work in this and hopefully um, we can keep that spotted owl population up. Yeah, my, my personal belief is if we do not manage the barred owl population, I do not believe you will recover the, the northern spotted owl. Um, that's my personal belief. Um, so, and then if you talk to, everybody's concerned about the lethal removal of the barred owl. If you talk to the people who have done it, nobody takes it lightly. Um, and they do put safeguards in there. I believe there's usually three people. So you have a person and they have, to, I think you have to have two people say that it's definitely a barred owl. And then the third person, um, they usually shoot them. Um, and so it's not taken lightly. And none of the people, it's, it's a hard step to get over because most of them love owls and love animals and don't want to see it. So I don't, you know, that's my personal belief. I don't, how are you going to recover the Northern Spotted Owl? They're, they're too impacted. You know, the, the barred owl will go, they'll live almost anywhere. Um, and the spotted owl will only live in the old growth, in, you know, forests that have old growth capabilities. We are getting some now that go into marginal, like foraging habitat and nests. They're getting pushed out, but they, they don't do as well. And the young, um, up to 70% of the young die. And a lot, of, a lot of that is during dispersal because they're getting picked off by um, predators. Yeah, I can't even imagine how difficult it is for biologists to remove um, a native species. Yeah, well, well, they're not native to California, but no, right. yeah. I understand <laughs> that, but you, you know what I mean. Yeah, 
Yeah, no, it's, it's, there's actually, um, and I should send you the link. You don't have to have a password, but the, if you go to the California Department of Fish and Wildlife Service, um, their website and search for conservation lecture series. And way at the bottom, one of the very first was Lowell Diller. That's the biologist's name that did the first removal study. And he has a two hour and they videoed it. He did a lecture for um, CDFW and it's on their webpage. And it's, it's a really interesting um, lecture series. And he goes much more in depth than what I did. And he did barred owl removal. He did the original study, you know, and he discusses it, you know, um, he, you know, he goes, it was really hard to take that first shot, you know, but then yeah. he, he was convinced he, he saw such, he had been managing those green diamond lands as a wildlife biologist for years. And he saw such a recovery. Um, unf unfortunately he has passed on since then. And what was his name again? Lowell, it's L-O-W-E-L-L, -L, and then Diller, D-I-L-L-E-R. And he has some really good peer-reviewed re research out there. And you said uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service? No, it's um, the California Department of Fish and Wildlife. And if you go to their website and search their conservation lecture series, so it's a small comfort to uh, those people here, but it seems to me that uh, if you look at the long picture uh, over eons, during the Pleistocene, there was probably barred owl habitat all the way across from coast to coast. And then uh, as it dried up in the middle, it, uh, they, the populations got separated and they've gone their own separate way and now uh, they're rejoining. It was probably all one population, all one species at one time. And that could be. I think they are looking, they have looked down those genetic lines. I didn't get that far into it. Um, that, you, that they're very closely related species. So that very well could be true. Um, another, and this is my own personal bias, but we did the Northwest Forest Plan um, the Northern Spotted Owl was the instigate, kind of the instigator in that. Um, that's also a very good plan. It's helping the fishers. It's helping um, several amphibians. It's, it's a good plan. Um, but we did a lot in the Pacific Northwest to protect the Northern Spotted Owl. And, and, and those things had a, a big effect on the economy of people, right? And um, I'm a wildlife biologist. I think animals are very important. And I think the way that we caretake for animals shows a lot about us as a society. But do we just give up on the spotted owl because the harm that's coming to it is an animal and not human cause? I, you know, I don't know. Those are big ethical discussions and I, I do not have the answer. I am not going to pretend to have the answer. Um, you know, makes you think. I don't know if I'm ready to give up on the Northern Spotted Owl, but I don't think I could shoot a barred owl. Yeah, <laughs> pretty tough, it's pretty tough. Um, does anyone else have any questions for Stephanie? I've, uh, I've recorded this uh, program um, and it will hopefully soon, I'll have it up on our new uh, Win2 Audubon YouTube site um, and I urge everyone to go there because we need um, 100 subscribers um, so that we can get a, a custom URL link and put our name on it. So uh, I've, I've uploaded a whole bunch of uh, videos already to that site, to uh, Win2 Audubon YouTube site. I put the link uh, you can just search for it on YouTube, Win2 Audubon. And um, a couple other people uh, have said, thank you, Stephanie. Great talk. Awesome material. Great job, Steph. And uh, if that is, there's no more questions, I guess we will call it a night.
Okay, well, thanks for having me. Well, thank you for doing our premier um, Zoom uh, presentation. And um, we hope everybody can live up to your standards. <laughs> I'm mm -hmm. sure they can. Thank you, everyone.